Hello, you guys. Welcome to episode eight of the Crime with Kylie podcast. Truly, I am so happy that you've joined in for today's episode. Honestly, it feels so weird to say that we're on episode eight because I swear I just uploaded episode one yesterday, but we're here. We're almost at 10 episodes and I just want to let you guys know what the goal is with this podcast, which is honestly in the next like few months is to get to two uploads per week. Right now, I am currently using an iPhone to film, but hopefully I will be able to get a camera soon. I just want to keep upping the quality, the information I can give you guys, the camera quality, the audio quality. I just want to keep improving it over time, so hopefully each episode is getting better. Your guys' feedback really helps, especially from Gail and Madison. I wish I could reply on Spotify, but it doesn't let me comment or anything like that, so I just want to give you guys a shout out because you guys have been so consistent and I really appreciate it. Now let's talk about the case that we're going to be covering today. Today's case is going to be on the disappearance of two-year-old Catrice Lee. And I know we've talked about cases involving children on this channel before, but this case in particular is really heart-wrenching and honestly gets to me because there is no closure. She is still missing. She has been missing for over 40 years now and her family has no answers. Also, my own daughter is around Catrice's age, so it's really hard to imagine not knowing what would happen to her for 40 plus years, and then also watching the police and the authorities just completely mishandle the case. As I'm sure you guys know, the first 24 hours of an investigation are vital, and in the first 24 hours of Catrice going missing, not much was done. But we will touch on that a little bit more later on in the episode. All right, Let's get into it. So as you guys know in these episodes, we usually try to focus more on the victims and the perpetrators, kidnappers, killers, etc. However, because Catrice was only two when she went missing, there's not much about her. So we're going to go over the basics like her birthday, when she was born, what she looks like, her eye condition, etc. And then we're going to go over her family members, what they were like, what they were doing back in 1981, what they're doing today. And then we're going to cover the day that she went missing, the events around that, the investigation, and then we're going to finish up the video with the theories. And I hope that all will help and provide more clarity as we continue on into this episode. Catrice Lee was born on November 28th of 1979 at a British military hospital in Rintelen. Catrice had beautiful curly hair, she had an infectious laugh, she had an adorable smile, and she loved to dance to ABBA in her parents' living room. At the time that Catrice was born, she had a five-year-old sister named Natasha Lee, she had her mom, Sharon Lee, her dad, Richard Lee, and her aunt, Wendy. Catrice's dad, Richard Lee, was a sergeant for the 15th, 19th King's Royal Hussars, and at the time in 1981, he was stationed in Paddleborn, Germany. And if you're American like me and don't know what that is, the 15th 19th King's Royal Hussars was a cavalry regiment for the British Army. And while Richard was serving in Paddleborn, Catrice, her mom, and her sister all lived in nearby Schloschneihaus, Germany. And I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly. Also, it's important to note that despite being raised her entire life in Germany, Catrice could only speak English. Richard and Sharon Lee married in 1972, and then they moved to West Germany. Now, Catrice went missing on her second birthday and two-year-olds know some words they can usually say hi mama dada occasional sentences they know who their family members are Depending on the child, some of them respond to no, some of them don't, it really just depends. But I do think from personal experience that one and a half year olds to two year olds do have some form of stranger danger. Usually it's after one year old that babies are very clingy to their parents and people who they know, shy away from strangers, hold on to mom or dad's leg. And from what I've found online from Catrice's family or from other documentaries, it seems that Catrice was that way too. On the morning of November 28th of 19. 1981, Catrice's family woke her up and sang her happy birthday while cradling her in their arms. And this was a very exciting day. It was a Saturday, Catrice's Aunt Wendy was in town, Richard was off of work, and everything seemed to be great and the family just wanted to go to the store that day to pick up a few things for Catrice's birthday. They wanted to get different snacks and things like that, so Sharon, Wendy, Richard, and Catrice all went to the supermarket. And Natasha, who was seven years old at the time, didn't want to go, so she stayed home. 
Now, the supermarket that they went to was the Navy, Army, and Air Force Institute supermarket, and the supermarket was primarily used by those who were a member of the Navy, Army, or Air Force, or a family member of those people. So, let's paint the picture of when they arrived at the supermarket. It was a chilly day, the rain had just started to fall, Richard decided to wait by the car while Sharon, Wendy, and Catrice went inside. Now, the women walked up and down the aisles with Catrice, they got their shopping done, and then they arrived at the checkout line where Sharon put Catrice down and realized that she had forgotten to get the crisps or the chips. So Sharon asked her sister Wendy to watch Catrice while she went and grabbed the chips. And this was a small supermarket, so Sharon was gone for a maximum of 60 seconds. But by the time she got back to the checkout line, she asked her sister Wendy where Catrice was, and Wendy said that Catrice had followed Sharon, which is so normal for a two-year-old to do. They do not like to be left by their parents, so it makes sense that Catrice would run after her mom. And Wendy had seen Catrice right on Sharon's heels, so she really wasn't worried. But as soon as the two women realized that Catrice wasn't with either one of them, they started shouting Catrice's name, running up and down the aisles of the supermarket, and they could not find Catrice. And Catrice's mom has said that you know your child's cry, and that if she heard Catrice's cry, even in that busy supermarket, that she would have known. And if you're not a parent, you might be thinking, that's crazy, all child's cries sound the same. And I have to say, I thought the same thing before I had a baby, but now it's like, nah, you, you know your child's cry, and you will hear it no matter what. To you, it is distinct and recognizable. So Sharon not hearing Catrice's cry in the store is potentially a very big clue in this case. And that brings us back to the stranger danger topic. Because Catrice's dad wore a uniform, and so did many of their neighbors, Catrice was very comfortable around people in uniforms. And that stranger danger sense did not go off with people who were wearing uniforms. So one of the theories that even Catrice's family believed is that she was abducted by someone in a uniform or someone who she knew. But let's go back to the scene. While all of this was going on, Catrice's dad, Richard, was outside standing by the car and he was starting to worry because there was no way that Sharon would be taking 30 minutes inside of the supermarket. The time just kept passing and it was very odd because he knew that she didn't need a lot of things in the store. Because of this, Richard figured that something was wrong, like maybe they had so much that they couldn't carry it by themselves or maybe something had gone wrong with the payment. So Richard decided to go inside of the supermarket and he did not see Catrice, he did not see Sharon, and he did not see Wendy by the cashiers, by the food or drink section. So he decided to walk around the store and he figured, hey, maybe they decided to get another gift for Catrice since it was her birthday. So he went to the toy section and looked for them there and he could not find them. But as he walked past the manager's office, he noticed that the door was open and inside he saw his wife and his sister-in-law and they were absolutely hysterical. Hysterical. Richard stepped inside of the office and asked what was going on and Wendy immediately said that Catrice has gone missing. And Richard is such a good dad, immediately without hesitation, without asking questions, he just went right back into the supermarket, found all of the soldiers from his unit, which was about a dozen different soldiers, and they started looking for Catrice. They did a ground search of the entire surrounding area, but they could not find Catrice. And there were so many people out and about that day. It was a college open day, so there were a ton of students and parents all around. But no one had seen Catrice, and authorities didn't even walk off the exit to the complex. Additionally, a huge snag in this case was whose jurisdiction was it? Was it the army police's or was it the Sloshnai House police's? After not being able to find Catrice anywhere around the complex, Richard, Sharon, and Wendy rushed back home in hopes that Catrice had somehow managed to get back. Catrice's sister, Natasha, age seven at the time, recalls her dad just bursting through the door and searching frantically for Catrice. While Richard was searching, Natasha remembers her mother's screams and cries. Soon after that, the investigation began and it was first taken by RMP, which was the Royal Military Police. However, the first mistake made by the Royal Military Police was not alerting the border guards that Catrice Lee was missing. And like I previously mentioned, they failed to close off the exits to the complex. So all this time that was passing as Catrice was missing, people were just going in and out of the complex. No one was stopping cars, no one was questioning the people leaving, nothing. With little to no context on Catrice, they just decided to focus on the river. The river that the Royal Military Police chose to focus in on was the Lippy River. And apparently this river is close by the military shopping complex. However, from what I've found, it seemed to be quite a distance away, like a 30 minute walk. So I don't know if they changed the location of the supermarket or if they shut down that specific location. But the authorities Authorities were keen on the idea that two-year-old Catrice Lee walked out of the supermarket by herself, then walked over to the nearby river, 
hopped in and drowned. And Catrice's family have never believed this theory for one second. For one, they never believed that Catrice would go near a body of water by herself. Two, she wouldn't stray away from her mom on her own. And three, that river has been searched thoroughly throughout the years and there has been no sign of Catrice, not even an article of clothing. And that day, Catrice's outfit was very distinct. She was wearing a beautiful teal trench coat with buttons and fringe on it, and she was wearing red wellies or red rain boots. For the investigation, police have recreated these articles of clothing, so that is what you're seeing on the screen right now. Catrice's original clothing that she was wearing that day have never been found. The investigation was also botched from the start in the sense that the Royal Military Police didn't even interview or interrogate the cashiers at the store for six weeks. They waited until six weeks after Catrice had gone missing to question them. And by that point, questioning them was almost to no use. As if that six-week time frame wasn't bad enough, it took investigators 20 years to interview another one of the staff members, which once again by that point was pretty useless. Authorities also failed to notify nearby hospitals that two-year-old Catrice had an eye condition that would have taken two surgeries to correct. Truly, it seems like anything that should have been done just wasn't. Soon, days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, and months turned into years. And it took until 2012 for the RMP to even apologize and admit that their investigation was flawed from the get-go. The Royal Military Police has acknowledged that the original investigation was flawed. Despite their admission and apology, not much has been done to make up for their mistakes. Catrice's case has been opened and closed multiple times throughout the years. In the year 2000, Catrice's case was opened once again during the year that she would have turned 21 years old. However, after nothing came of that, her case was closed once again, only to be opened a few years later in 2012. In 2012, they decided to focus on a different river. This river was River Alm or River Alme. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but just like with the first time that they investigated her case, they decided to focus in on that drowning theory. And in 2018, they thought that they found something. They found bone fragments. However, those bone fragments ended up belonging to a horse. After that failed search in 2018, it further fueled Richard Lee's theory on what happened to his daughter. No evidence of Catrice at this vicinity. This year, Richard Lee's original belief that his daughter was kidnapped in 1981 finally became the focus of the investigation. A search of this German riverbank close to where she vanished found no trace, casting real doubt on the old police theory that she'd either drowned or had been murdered. It's been probably the most important year on the case for Catrice. It's taken me 36 years to get the correct information. He believes that his Catrice is still very much alive today, and that by this point he could potentially be a grandfather. In 2017, they put this image out of a man that was described by an eyewitness. The witness said that this man was seen carrying a small child and getting into a green saloon vehicle around the complex. But not much has come of that. Catrice's sister, Natasha, has said, Catrice has missed everything in my life, and I've missed everything in hers. The fairy tale is that she was taken and raised by a loving family and that she's safe and happy and adored. But the nightmare is that she's been raped and murdered and is buried somewhere. It's the wondering and the constant scenarios that are so hard to deal with. No matter which theory you believe is true in this case or which theory is actually true, none of them are good. No matter what happened, Catrice's family doesn't have closure. They don't know what happened to their Catrice. They never should have had to endure living all of this time without their Catrice. If someone took her because they couldn't have a child of their own or if they paid someone to take her because they couldn't have a child of their own, that is just beyond messed up. And that is not worth the heartbreak and the worrying that Catrice's family have had to go through. And I hope that if that is the case, that someday that weighs heavily enough on their conscience for them to come forward and admit the truth. So that way Catrice can be reunited with those who love her, her true family. Catrice's sister Natasha, who is now Natasha Walker, created a Facebook page 15 years ago called The Search for Catrice Lee. And to this day, she is very much active on it. As of yesterday, August 23rd of 2023, she is being interviewed for Channel 5's Vanished to help continue to spread awareness about her sister Catrice and to keep Catrice's name out there. The last major update on Catrice's case was on September 23rd of 2019 when an ex-serviceman was arrested and then released two days later in connection with Catrice's case. This arrest occurred while authorities were searching the garden of a home in Swindon which was 500 miles away from where Catrice went missing. 
However, not many other details have been released about that since. If Catrice Lee is alive today, she would be 44 years old, almost 45 in this upcoming November. And honestly, I personally believe that she is alive and I a thousand percent believe Richard's theory that she was abducted and given to another couple. And I truly do hope that someday soon Catrice Lee is reunited with her true family because they still very much love her, miss her, and are searching for her. Currently, I'm going to show you guys on the screen the different age-progressed images of Catrice Lee. I believe the most recent one would have been what she would look like at age 38. If any of you have any valid leads or tips on this case, I will leave the authorities' contact on the screen. And please just contact the authorities and not Catrice's family because they have already been through enough heartache and in 2020, a woman named Heidi Robinson did an unthinkable thing where she posed as Catrice Lee. She was a 40-year-old woman on Facebook, she made this Facebook profile where she called herself Catrice Lee. She reached out to Natasha and pretended to be Natasha's sister. She also refused to take the Facebook profile down even when DNA evidence proved that she was not Catrice Lee. Thankfully, she was given some sort of repercussion and that repercussion was an 18-month prison sentence. Suffice to say, Catrice's family have been through more than enough. Please send loving thoughts towards Catrice and her family and I will see you guys for next week's episode.